Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's Car Critters, Village Heroes, and Butterfly Kisses. So I've stamped out the images I'll be using on some Nina Solar White cardstock with Jet Black ink from Lawn Fawn, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I'm starting with my car, and for that I'm going to use B21, B23, and B26. The B26 is what I'm going to lay in all of my shadows with, and then I'll blend out with the B23 as my midtone, and then fill in the rest of the space with the B21 for a highlight. So all of us in my family, myself, my husband, and my oldest son, we all own gray cars, every one of us. Uh, would, it's kind of funny, it just worked out that way. But I wanted to color this car blue today because I wanted a nice bright pop. I wanted the th color theme to be bright primary colors. Um, and that is because our current Lawn Fanatics Challenge is back to school and uh, teacher themed. But my kids are too old for teacher cards. And because of that, I actually don't even own any back to school or teacher themed stamp sets. So I decided to make this challenge work for me, just reinterpret the theme in a way that suits my card making and where I am in my life. So I'm actually making this card as if you were going to give it to someone who has been like a mentor in your life or even like a driving instructor. My middle child um, is learning how to drive right now. So um, this could be for someone like that or even just somebody in your life that, you know, has been like a guiding force. So it's a teacher per se, but um, not quite in the original interpretation of the challenge. But I also wanted to make sure to add little things into the card that will tie into that school theme. So I've got that school bus on there. And then using the bright primary colors is also going to tie into the theme. So I'm using Y000, Y11, and Y13 for the headlights and then Y13, Y15, and Y17 for that license plate. And also I'm going to use these shades for the school bus. So the um, state that I live in, Pennsylvania, our license plates are blue and gold. And when I was very young, they used to have a gold background with blue lettering back when I was in school, grade school. Um, but now today they are blue with yellow lettering. But anyway, I just thought that's another little nod to that school theme. So, um, you know, when you have like a card challenge like this and you think, oh, I don't want to play along in this one because it just doesn't suit where I am in my life. It doesn't suit the supplies that I have. It doesn't suit, um, you know, maybe like who you are going to give cards to. Try to reinterpret it in a new way. Think of other ways that you might be able to utilize it to just challenge yourself and think outside the box and make it work for you. Remember that it's a challenge and not a hard and fast rule. It's supposed to be fun. So I'm moving on to my bumper and I'm using C0, C1, and C3 for that. I wanted the highlight to be in the center to kind of match the hood, so I just put the dark color on the outside edges and blended toward the middle. And then I'm also going to use the C1 and C0 to color in the white parts of my ambulance. And then I'll take away the C0 and add in the C5 to do the tires on all of my vehicles. So that C5 is going to be my darkest now. Um, for the car in the center, I put it on the outside edges and blended toward the inside for the highlight. And then for the two that are facing sideways, I just put the shadow down in the bottom right and then put the highlight in the top left. And you could definitely go with some darker shades if you wanted to, but I just wanted to keep things kind of in the same tone just like in the mid-range for this card. For the red parts of my ambulance, I'm using R24, R29, and R39. 
And here I'm doing another nod to my personal situation. My husband is a nurse at a local hospital, and so having that little ambulance in there is just a little bit more of my family story going into this card. So I just love finding ways to make things just a little bit more personal and, you know, a little bit more um, detailed for the people that you're sending them to. You know, most people, when they look at this final card, they wouldn't know that this says anything about me. But if you're giving this to somebody who knows you and knows your situation, um, it's nice to have those little details. So I colored the stop sign with those shades as well. And then I'm using just the R29 and the R24 to color in the little side lights on the car and also the brake lights on the back of the bus and the ambulance. The two little bears I'm going to color with the same combo so they could be part of a family if you wanted them to be. Um, so I'm using E43, E44, and E47 for those. So I'm laying in a little bit of shadow with that E47 um, not too much because I don't want them to get too dark and I definitely want to have room for all three of those shades So just sticking really close to the drawn outline and then blending out with the E44 And then I'll finish with that E43 which is quite a bit lighter So it's going to really soften up their faces so that you can see those facial features uh, nice and clear for the map, I wanted to color that in a light blue. So I started with B41, and then I decided to add in a B quadruple zero just to lighten up the center so it wasn't too close to the color of the car. And I added a little bit more of that B41 just for some definition on the outside edges. And then the two clouds that are from Butterfly Kisses, I wanted to turn those into bushes on the side of the road. So I'm going to use G20, G21, G24, and G28 for those. So I know that's four shades, but I just wanted there to be a lot of depth and contrast on these little clouds that I'm turning into bushes. Um, so I used that G28 down at the bottom and then blended that out with a G24. And then that G21 is very similar in tone, but it really does help bridge the gap to that G20 because there is quite a bit of difference between the G20 and the G24. And then I just went back in with a second layer of each of those to just help smooth the transition because that G20 likes to really push the other colors away. So it just helps to smooth everything out to have that second layer. And then I'm going to do the same with the smaller cloud. I colored in the grasses with those same greens and now moving on to my other clouds and I'm using BG10 to just give them a little bit of shading on the outside edges. Then I'm grabbing a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen and going over the eyes of the bears to make them nice and bright and shiny. And then I will trim these images out with their matching dyes. Next, I took the Lawn Fawn Road Border and I cut that out of some black licorice cardstock and then some white cardstock for the second piece. And I'm taking a Y15 marker and coloring down the center of the road. And then I'm taking the uh, 110 marker, the black marker, to just go on the outside edges since these are both the same size. That way I won't have any of that white cardstock showing through. And I thought it was easier to do it this way than to try to die cut that out of yellow cardstock and then fit all of the little center pieces in. This just seemed like a lot quicker. And then I'm going to line those two up and I'll add some liquid glue behind so that I can adhere them together, making sure to stay away from the center little cuts so I won't have any glue splooging out. And then I'm going to hold that together for a few seconds till it dries and then I'll trim off the excess at the ends with a pair of scissors. I like to use my um, Cutter B Teflon coated scissors just in case there is any glue, this just keeps them uh, free from getting sticky. 
So I wanted to create a junction where the road comes out toward the viewer. So I'm holding that road border at the top of another piece of black licorice cardstock and taking a pencil and just sketching in a road that's kind of turning out from that um, side road and then you know coming at you straight on and then I'm going to take my scissors once again and just trim that out and um, I can make some adjustments as needed but this is going to give me a basic shape there so I'll smooth out any little bumpy bits and then I'm going to take an eraser and um, erase any of those pencil lines so those don't show up on the final card I'm taking a Lawn Fawn Stitch Hillside border and I die cut that out of a piece of Noble Fur cardstock and I'm going to adhere that to my Mermaid card base. It's a top folding standard size card and then I'm going to add that side road up towards the top of the hill and then I'll grab the road that I cut out myself and I'm just going to uh, fiddle with that until I have it looking like it's coming out of that first road and coming down toward the viewer and then I will open up my card base and trim off any of that excess. Then I'm going to pop that in my Misty. I just opened up the card to make it a little more flat since there's a few layers of cardstock on there now. I'm going to treat the road with a EK Success powder tool. Mine is a little bit clogged, so I just had to carefully open it up. And then I'm going to stamp down my sentiment using some Versamark ink. This is just a clear sticky ink that works great for heat embossing because it really grabs a hold of that powder. So I stamped it down twice to get a good impression, but I did press down very lightly each time. And then I'm going to coat that with some white embossing powder. I'm going to brush off any excess and tap it off from the back and then I'll bring my heat tool over to that and heat that from the back first. That just helps to minimize any warping and then I'll bring it to the front and heat set that until it's nice and bright and white and shiny. Then I'm going to open up that card in my Misty so that I can finish stamping my inside sentiment and images. And this time I'm using the little schoolhouse, which could also be a church if you wanted it to be. Um, so it could also be towards someone who's guiding you spiritually. And the sentiment, I'd be lost without you. And now I'm going to start adding my images. I used a little piece of score tape on the back of the card just to help hold those tiny little bears into the window from the inside. So I'm going to get those placed where I want them before I adhere that to the card just by grabbing them with that little piece of sticky score tape. And once I have them um, adhered how I want them, then I can add some more liquid glue and I'll get that situated on my card. Since this is the largest image, I really wanted this to be placed down first and then I can build my scene out around it. So I'm lining that up right above the sentiment and I also did stamp out one of the little license plate sentiments while I had my Misty out. Um, there's a couple in that Car Critters set. I did the one that says you are great because I just felt that went with the theme the best. And then I'm adding those two cloud bushes on either side of the road just to fill in, you know, and give it a little bit more shrubbery and a little more interest there. And then I've got those bits of grass as well. So to kind of just um, break it up, I'm going to add the larger grass on the side with the smaller bush and then the smaller grass on the side with the larger bush. I just feel like that adds a little more balance to the scene. Next, I'm going to grab my two vehicles and I'm going to put the ambulance first going toward the left and then I'll put the school bus behind him. Um, because we all know what it's like to get stuck behind a school bus and I thought the ambulance was probably in a hurry and so they should be out in front heading to their emergency. Hopefully everybody's safe inside. And then I had this stop sign and I was trying to figure out where to put it but I decided um, over on the left hand side of the card was uh, where it looked the best. 
And then my last two images are these little clouds. So I'll add those up to the sky and just kind of fill in some of that space up there that's looking a little blank right now, but those clouds just really help balance everything out. And then one final detail, I wanted to add one of these little sound sentiments. Um, there's a few different ones in this set as well, but I'm using the one that says "ew" because it just fits so perfectly on the top of that curve of the hill. So I stamped that out in Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink again. So I'll hold that up to the camera so you can see all of the detail and give you another peek at the inside. And that is going to complete my card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And I hope I gave you some ideas and some encouragement to play along with these card challenges. We would love to have you over at Lawn Fanatics, so come check us out. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe and ring the notification bell. I post new videos every Monday and Friday and occasionally on Wednesdays. And if you can't wait that long, here are two extra videos I thought might also interest you. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.